Hey everyone, this is Brian from Provision Studios, and today I'm making a quick video to just uh, go over color management in uh, DaVinci Resolve and basically how to set that up for a C Log uh, styled shoot. Um, I have a Canon XF400 as well as a Canon Vixia HFG60 and both of those um, camcorders have the capability of shooting in uh, C-Log3. So in just the simplest terms, color management is um, when you take footage that is uh, in, the, in the negative state or a flat state such as a RAW or a log clip and you allow your software to automatically convert that image into what is uh, going to be your display color space in which case um, Rec 709 is where we're trying to hit so we'll see here on the screen I have a C-Log clip um, that is flat or um, it, it, this this would, could be considered a negative um, this is straight out of the camera no grading or anything and if we look at our um, our settings here I have a, a DaVinci YRGB color managed um, uh, profile set up and then my color processing mode I, I choose custom because I want to drill down and allow um, my color managed uh, profile to be what I shot my footage in. In this case I'm in C-Log3 and we are going for the Rec. 709 Gamma 2.4 and this is going to be both the timeline and our output. Our output is basically what we want to be able to view both on our monitor and as we send it out. So um, if I click on this clip here you'll see I have bypass color management. So basically I've, I've got my color management set up here inside of DaVinci Resolve but I temporarily have it disabled so you guys can see what the flat footage would look like. So now if I click on this and take the bypass off, we'll see the, um, the effect of what DaVinci Color Management does to this flat or this, this log footage. So right off the bat, we've got a much more uh, full color spectrum as we see here on our scopes. Let me bypass that again one more time and keep your eye on the RGB parade right here. Bypassed, nice and compressed, or flat as, as we would call it. Um, this, is prefer, this, this preserves all of our, uh, our shadows and all of our highlights in this clip. So while it may look like this is very dull and unsaturated, in reality, this C-Log clip is full of information that we are going to be able to pull out of this thanks to the DaVinci Resolve color management. So again, I'll, I'll turn the bypass off and watch the RGB parade scopes one more time. So there we go. We get a nice full um, color spectrum here based on this color management setting that we have uh, prepared. Okay. So, another way to look at this is um, what if, you know, the uh, color management is, um, let's say, uh, not optimal for the footage I have. In other words, let's say I've got like four or five clips shot with different cameras. What you could do is you could go in, instead of bypassing and then trying to do a, a, a grade a, you know a, a grade over here where let's say we do uh, color space transform let's go uh, rec 709 
input gamma would be C log three. Output color space again is rec 709 with our 2.4 gamma. And we want to use rex. So let's let's say we, we wanted to have it where we could control each clip individually. So you would you, know, you 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 would bypass your color management on that one clip if it wasn't what you have set up here. So let's say you have a, uh, a drone shot, a DJI drone. Obviously, that's not going to be Canon Log 3, but you may have five other clips that are C-Log. So you don't want to color manage for the, the that one clip. You want to color manage for the, 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 the multitude of clips or the majority of the clips. So the workaround for that would be you would bypass color management for that one clip and then you would be able to use a color space transform to apply a grade that equals um, your, your, imp your, your input source, whether it be a DJI drone, uh, maybe a Sony S-Log um, or, or the like, so, or, um, or even a red raw clip. You know, maybe you rented a camera or you may own one and that's that's kind of where you're at there. Again, you you, you don't have to even use um, a, a, a specific camera. You you could go in with you know an ACES color space and start start there. And then start adjusting your exposure and your balance and such to try to get this footage to where you, you'd want it to be. So what, what that would look like, let's just reset these three. Reset, reset, reset. Let's say we want to go and boost our exposure a little bit. Adjust our contrast. And then there, there you go. So we can go from our ACES um, color management and then grade off of it. Now ACES is um, the um, uh, it's sort of a global accepted standard for cinema grading. So this would be a way for you to ensure that your color matches, you know, a multitude of other types of uh, footage shot um, by other people, you know, to beat that, that their, their, their global standard. All right. So, um, Again, um, I shoot primarily in uh, C-Log, so I tend to like to work out of this and then go in and I would adjust these exposure, contrast, and balance. I would, I would adjust these to get where I want to be. Just again, real quick, just dialing these in a little bit. There you go, not bad. So that's, that, that's not a bad base grade. Going off of our color management. Again, we can bypass the color management, bypass our effects, and see our true flat footage at any point in time, just to sort of see where we're going with, with what we're doing. And it's a good way to see your progress. Um, I always like to keep my eye on my RGB parade and on my scopes just to make sure that I'm not going uh, too high or uh, you know, pulling things too low to where I'm going to be um, losing detail or losing information. So if, 
again, this is unaffected, and then this is without a little bit of grain, and it may be a little overexposed. So you can always turn off something if you, if you don't like the way it's going. So let's dial that back a little bit. Yeah, that's good. And then we can pull our blue up a little bit down there in our lows so that we're not we're not losing our, our you know that detail in the uh, shadows not bad not bad at all okay i could try a different clip here Again, this would be our base um, negative. We are in the C log three, so you can see what that would do. You can add a little exposure, a little contrast, a balance adjustment, a little bit of saturation. In this case, it's a little desaturation. And we can go in here, we can, we can adjust for any type of, you know, uh, loss of detail we think we may be getting. Not bad. I think I like it a little warmer. The contrast does a lot. I think I like that right there. Yeah. All right. Either way, with um, whether it's 30p or 60p, you're going to get. Now these were shot at different times of the day, so um, now what if we have a um, What if we have a grade that we want to compare? So in this case, we have our color space transform. Again, there's, there's our negative or our, just our raw log, log footage. Color space transform gets us into the color space of the footage that we shot on, you know, on our device and what we're trying to get at. And then now here in uh, Resolve, I can grab a still. And then what I can do then is I can go, I can turn off all of the effects. I can go back to, you know, uh, my color management and now I can wipe. So this would be my color space or my color management and this would be my color space transform. So that's a much different grade you know, altogether. And you're able to simply go in <clears throat> with either one of these techniques and find what works best for you. The idea is <clears throat> when you use the color management, your nodes are not going to be needed to get to this. Your, your your footage is automatically going to come in with a a base grade that you can then build from and then if you are um, you want more control over where you start or you have more room to, to, to do things you could then use the um, instead of the color management 
you could just import your footage <coughs> as you normally would and then use the color space transform tool to get your footage in a, in, in a good area and then build from the left of it. So we would have our color space transform at the end of our node tree and then we would build into it. So regardless of what you're uh, what you're you're going for you can see whether it's color management or just building a basic grade from a color space transform you can get really good results in DaVinci Resolve um, and quickly so you don't have to learn a lot about color management you don't have to learn a lot about the, the techniques involved with being a colorist what you do need to know is what you are shooting in. Um, so you, if, you, if you're not sure of the color space of the camera you have, or if you're even able to shoot in log or raw footage, then definitely go to your manufacturer's website and look at some of the information that would be enclosed there. Um, this, this is a, um, it's an advanced way of working, but again, DaVinci Resolve makes it real easy to where you can get up and running real quick and get your your footage uh, to a really good starting spot that you can then create your look uh, with without wasting 15 20 30 minutes of getting each one of your clips into um, you, you know your your starting color space this will do it you you import 15 clips into the into this uh, this session right here into this timeline and they're automatically all going to have this color management applied to it. So um, if you have any questions about what I showed here today, please feel free to leave them in the section below or you can also feel free to uh, email me at bvuck822 at gmail.com and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. Thank you very much and hope you have a great day. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye now.